this video is strictly for educational purposes only all the attacks were performed in a controlled virtual lab environment so we are carrying out this entire set of attacks uh, using virtual machines in an isolated uh, private network the presenter is not responsible for any misuse of the information presented in this video and does not support any malicious hacking activities hacking systems is a cyber crime and uh, will land you in prison if you misuse such tools or systems for which you don't have permission Hello and welcome back to another session on uh, cyber security. In this session, we'll be taking a look at the auxiliary modules in Metasploit framework. So we have already taken up two sessions on Metasploit. One is on an introduction to modules in Metasploit. And the next one, we have looked at the basic commands in Metasploit and we have seen how to exploit a vulnerable FTP service VSFTPD 2.3.4 using Metasploit framework. So if you have not visited uh, those two lectures of mine, I recommend you to visit those two lectures and come to this lecture. In today's lecture, we'll be looking at the auxiliary modules in Metasploit. So let me start Metasploit. Uh, we can go to the terminal. Let me zoom in. So let me uh, further zoom in. And you start by giving sudo msf uh, console. Enter the root password. And uh, we are starting Metasploit framework. The other way to start it uh, is you can go to exploitation tools and uh, click on Metasploit framework. So it takes a uh, few minutes to start. So today we're going to take a look at auxiliary modules. What is the use of auxiliary modules? It's used for gathering information about the victim system. And it's also used for uh, scanning the victim machines. There are other purposes, but our focus will be on uh, scanning the victim machines today. So what is the lab setup I'm using here? For this, uh, let me go to a blank screen. So this is my lab setup. Uh, I have Oracle VirtualBox running in my system, which is using Windows as the host platform. And uh, we have Kali Linux installed as a virtual machine, we have Metasploitable running. Uh, we have Metasploit uh, framework running here. And uh, my victim machine is a Linux, vulnerable Linux machine, which is running Metasploitable 2. And uh, these machines are in a network using the host only adapter. So now what is that we are going to see is how to use auxiliary modules auxiliary modules for port scanning port scanning so this is the objective and we'll be looking at these things tcp port scanner and uh, tcp syn port scanner and uh, tcp ck this is firewall uh, scanner so we'll look at these variations. We'll also see how to scan FTP login and the SSH version. So we'll be scanning these uh, details about this victim machine, which is running Metasploitable 2, a vulnerable Linux machine. And we'll be performing all these scans using the auxiliary modules of Metasploit framework. So let's uh, quickly move into the uh, scanning part now. From Metasploit, we'll be searching for port scan. And this will be fetching us all the modules present inside our auxiliary module with respect to port scanning. So in this session, we'll be focusing on three important scans, TCP port scanner, TCP SYN port scanner, and TCP ACK firewall scanner. We will see how we can use these modules to scan our victim machine, which is nothing but this uh, vulnerable Linux machine, which is running Metasploitable 2. So let's uh, start with our commands now. So what is that we are going to use here? The first scanner we are going to take a look at is TCP port scanner. 
So this uh, corresponds to the ID5. So let's uh, take a look at the info, info5. So it gives us some information about uh, this specific port scanner, TCP port scanner. So enumerate open TCP surfaces by performing a full TCP connect on each port. So it performs a full TCP connect. So what does that mean? Let's go to uh, my PowerPoint presentation here and uh, let me erase all link on the slide. So what do you mean by a full TCP connect? So here is this uh, our attacking machine and here is the victim machine. So there will be a TCP uh, SYN packet sent from the attacker to the victim and then the victim is going to send an acknowledgement and again this uh, attacker should be sending an acknowledgement. So there is uh, this full TCP connect that's happening, a TCP handshake that's happening between the attacking system and the victim system. So by this process, we'll be able to scan what are the TCP ports that are open or vulnerable. What are the TCP ports that are open or vulnerable in our victim machine? So that's what uh, the TCP port scanner is all about. So that's what this says, enumerate open TCP services by performing a full TCP connect on each port. So let's uh, use the ID5. So we are using this uh, specific module, scanner, port scan, TCP scanner. And uh, we can go with show options. And you can see here, all these options are required and we have some default set for all the options, except for one specific option, our hosts. So it's our duty to set the remote, remote host which is nothing but our uh, victim machine. The IP address of the victim machine will set to say this is the IP address of my victim 192.168.56.103. So we'll set remote host to be a victim 192.168.56.103. So once uh, uh, we have set, we have set all the parameters. We are going with the current setting, the defaults for other parameters. Now what we can do is we can run, just execute this command and you can see when you are uh, uh, executing this uh, specific module, it gives us uh, the list of uh, ports, TCP ports that are open in 103. So 103 is the IP address of our victim. It says port number 21, 22, 23, 25, port number 80. So all these ports are open. So we are able to scan our TCP ports using a full TCP connect. So this is the use of a TCP port scanner, which is present as part of the auxiliary modules. A very interesting thing. See, you can uh, go to your uh, vulnerable machine and then you can check using NetConnect uh, whether that specific port is open or not. Uh, so let me enter the command here. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's net connect uh, z icon B verbose uh, local host port 80. So just to check whether port 80 is open. You see in the victim port 80 is open. So like that you can check the status of a port on the victim machine. And that's what we are scanning here. See, we are able to scan 103 port number 21 is open, port number 80 is open. So we are able to perform a scan on our victim to see what ports are vulnerable. For this, what is that we have used? We have used the TCP port scanner, which is present inside the auxiliary module of Metasploit framework. I hope you are clear with the TCP port scanner, how it works. Now let's go with TCP SYN port scanner. So what is this TCP SYN port scanner? You call this to be an half scanner and how it is different from a TCP port scanner. See, while you're looking at this TCP handshake, it's a three-way handshake. First, you send the SYN request, then you get an acknowledgement, and then the attacker sends an acknowledgement. In half-way scanner, TCP SYN port scanner, we're not going to send another acknowledgement from this attacker. So you're going to have this SYN packet coming here, and then 
we are going to have an acknowledgement from the uh, victim. We are not going to complete this entire connect. So this scan is going to be a little faster than TCP port scanner that uses a complete uh, TCP connect. So we will see how to use this TCP uh, SYN port scanner. So what is that we are going to use next is this sixth one TCP SYN port scanner. So for that uh, the ID number is 6. If you want to know more about this uh, we will go back and then we'll say use or else we can go with the information on 6 and uh, here we have the information about TCP uh, SYN port scanner and uh, you can use that specific module by saying use that ID and now we're going to use the SYN port scanner we'll go with show options to see the options that we need to set and uh, these are the options and we have uh, default options set for all the other parameters but remote host parameter we should set that is the IP address of a victim so we'll set our host 192.168.56.103 and uh, we should run this uh, scanner so this is going to scan for open ports on our uh, victim but now it's going to use a TCP SYN port scanner. That's the half scanner. Okay, here we're getting the results. Uh, we are seeing that port number 80 is open, port number 23 is open, and uh, we'll be getting the results for the other ports too. I hope you are now clear with uh, the difference between TCP scanner, TCP port scanner, and TCP SYN port scanner. So all these scanners are available inside, inside the auxiliary module. What is the use of auxiliary module? It's used for scanning uh, systems, gathering information about systems. Uh, let me for now uh, cancel this uh, SYN port scanner so that we can go for other scans. So what are the other scans uh, we're going to take a look at? Search port scan. I told you we are going to take a look at TCP ACK firewall scanner. So that ID is 4. What is this? Let's uh, take a look at info of 4. And uh, map out firewall rule sets with a raw acknowledgement scan. So here we are going to check whether there are any unfiltered ports. Meaning that ports that are not filtered by firewalls. So this uh, is used for checking uh, what kind of uh, rule sets run behind a firewall and uh, whether a port is being filtered or not. So for to use this, we'll go with use uh, four and uh, we'll take a look at the options here. The options here tell us that uh, we have to set the R hosts. Uh, the remaining parameters, we have some default options. So we'll set R hosts to be the victim's uh, IP address 56.103 and uh, here we'll just execute the command by saying run. So now we are checking what are the ports that are unfiltered on the victim. So when you say it's unfiltered, it's uh, vulnerable, it's not protected by firewalls or intrusion detection systems. So we see a lot of unfiltered ports, port number 22, port number 27, 28, 31 like that. So we can use this TCP ACK firewall scanner to identify firewalls and what kind of rule sets uh, govern these firewalls. And uh, there are a lot of variations to this on how to use the scanner. This is a very uh, brief overview of what this scanner is all about. So we have looked at uh, three different scanners here, TCP port scanner, TCP SYN port scanner, TCP ACK firewall scanner. Let me stop the scan and let me go back. See, when you're talking about uh, auxiliary modules, it's all about scanning and gathering information from the victim. So for this, we can also use ping. Ping utility is inbuilt and uh, you can very well ping to discover whether a system is alive or not. So 192.168.56.103. So we are just pinging the system and you're getting a response back and we are getting the response back. So I see the packets are sent back and forth. So this says the system, we are able to uh, connect to the system. So let me stop that. 
So ping is one utility wherein you can uh, discover the system. And the next utility we have, we have already discussed about this in, in depth. I have a separate video on this that is Nmap. Nmap is a network scanning tool which will be used for scanning victim systems, their open port, the services, a lot of things you have done with Nmap. So Nmap is also inbuilt in uh, 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 Metasploit and you can use Nmap by just giving the ID Nmap uh, 192.168.56.103 so this will uh, find out all the open ports uh, in the specific victim machine so nmap can also be used for scanning systems uh, by using the metasploit framework so we are uh, done with uh, scanning to a certain extent we have understood the three types of scanners we have understood ping and we have understood that nmap exists within metasploit so we can perform all these things. Not only that, we can also scan the FTP login. Say, for instance, let me search for FTP uh, login. And uh, there's an auxiliary module which uh, performs an FTP authentication scanner. So this module will get the more info about this module. And uh, this module will test FTP logins on a range of machines and report successful logins. So we are checking whether we'll have a successful login um, for an FTP service. So let's uh, use this, use zero. And uh, what is that we are going to set here is we are going to uh, set some options. For this, we'll go with show options. And uh, here we have a lot of options most of the options has some default setting but there is uh, one option that is username say when you're logging into an ftp service you have to provide the username and password so here you have to set what is the username and here you have some options you can also provide a password file so file containing list of passwords so what the scanner is going to do is take your username take every password from the file and try logging into that victim machine if there is a successful login it will stop so that is uh, the thing and um, user as password. See, this option is used to set the username as password. Sometimes there is an FTP uh, login wherein the username is same as the password. When you set this to true, it will take the username and uh, use the password as the username and try to log in. So there are certain options here and uh, let's uh, uh, take a look at this. Uh, So what is that I'm going to do here is set remote host. Our host is my victim, 192.168.56.103. And next I have to set uh, the username. Set username. I will set the username as MSF admin. And here I need to set uh, a user password file. You can set the user password file containing usernames or passwords or you can just supply a password file containing only the passwords one per line. So what this will do is it will take MSF admin as the username and then it will take the password from the file and it will start checking whether the, that login is uh, fine or not. But what is that we are going to perform here is uh, we can also set password like this directly you can set password MSF admin. So you want to directly attempt uh, username to be MSF admin, password to be MSF admin, you can perform that. The other way around is we can also set uh, user as pass to be true. So what is this uh, user as pass? This is username as password. So by default it is false. I'm setting this to true. What does that mean is it will take the username as MSF admin, password as MSF admin, and then it's going to try. And then finally we should execute the command by typing run. So you see here login successful. So what it tried, it tried uh, to perform an FTP login using the username as MSF admin, password as MSF admin on this victim machine and it is able to establish that uh, specific uh, connection. See, it says login is successful. So it was able to crack the username and password with the data that we have provided. 
So you can carry out this using a user password file containing usernames and passwords. So it's going to take up every username and password here and attempt that on that machine. Or else you can provide a password directly or else you can provide a password file which contains all the passwords. So you set the username and it's going to take every password from the file and try attempting to log in. So now we know that uh, the victim machine, the FTP service can be cracked using the username as MSF admin and the username is same as the password. So like that, uh, you can also search for other things like, uh, let me clear the screen, let's go back. Uh, you can also uh, search for SSH uh, version. We can identify the SSH version on a system, on the victim using these modules here. So let's uh, use SSH version scanner. That is, uh, let's use three. And uh, what is that we'll do is we'll show options here. And uh, here remote port is 22 for an SSH uh, login and a remote host we need to set. Let's set a remote host to be 192.168.56.103. Now, uh, let us uh, run. We are just going to identify the SSH version running on this victim. So you see here, uh, we have got some details on the SSH version uh, running on that uh, specific uh, victim machine, SSH server version. So we are able to get a lot of info about the SSH uh, server version on that specific victim. Likewise, uh, we can also check for SSH login. See, we can scan for SSH login. Let me go back and let me clear the screen. So how will you scan for SSH login? It's like um, a search SSH uh, login. And uh, now we have an SSH uh, login scanner here, which is present in the auxiliary module. Let's uh, get some info on that module by using the ID. So this module will test SSH logins on a range of machines and report successful logins. So will we be able to crack an SSH login using some username and password? That's the key here. So let's uh, use uh, that specific uh, module. What is that module? Zero. So use zero. And uh, let me clear the screen. Let's go with show options here. What options we need to set uh, for this? So here uh, we have a lot of default options. Remote port number is 22, remote host we need to set. And we can also enter the password to check whether that password and username will be uh, tracking that specific SSH login. As usual, we can set a password file which will contain all the passwords one per line. So it will take the username we are providing one password from that file and will test that SSH login of the victim. We can also set the username as password and try this specific uh, option or else you can provide an user password file which contains the usernames and passwords separated by a space so it takes every username and password and tries testing that ssh login so now what we'll do is we'll set a uh, user uh, we'll set our host remote host to be the victim 192.168.56.103 and we'll set username Username here is MSF uh, admin, and uh, we can set the password. Say set the uh, user as uh, pass uh, to be true. Next, we'll try and run. Scanned one of one host hundred percent uh, complete SSH session one open. So it says from Kali Linux to. Uh, the victim machine with IP 192.168.56.103 on port number 22, it was able to open an SSH connection. So what we understand uh, from this is uh, this specific uh, password and username. So it says success, it uses brute force. So it's going to take MSF admin and then it's going to take the password as MSF admin and try testing this SSH login. So we were able to successfully establish or crack this SSH login on the victim machine. And once when you have an FTP login or an SSH login username and password, you can try sending files, you can try receiving files and all those things. So that's the brief overview of uh, what is that we have seen here. Let me go back and uh, um, that is the brief 
overview what is that we have seen as an overview of some of the uh, modules in uh, inside auxiliary modules so we have looked at auxiliary modules uh, we have looked at uh, some of the auxiliary modules uh, like uh, port scanners we have seen tcp port scanner tcp sin port scanner tcp ack firewall scanner we have looked at ping and map we have looked at ftp login how to crack ftp login and how to crack ssh login and also how to scan for the ssh version on a victim machine not only that uh, you have other auxiliary modules say if you want to explore all the other auxiliary modules what is that you're going to do search type uh, to be auxiliary that's it uh, if you're looking for a victim machine that's using the platform as uh, Linux, you're just going to give it as Linux and uh, the rank of those uh, modules should be excellent. So that's it. You're going to get... Uh, okay, search. Uh, let me give type auxiliary. Maybe that will throw us. Uh, you see, there are 1574 uh, different options available for uh, scanning the victim machines. And these scans... Yeah, we have ranked to be normal, excellent, and things like that. So you can filter this and you can try exploring all these different scanners. So with that, we are coming to an end of this session. I hope you had a good insight on what auxiliary modules in Metasploit framework are used for. That's it for now. Take care.